Good evening. Thanks once again for joining me around God's Word. I appreciate you being here and that we can uh, again extract some life principles from the Word of God. We started talking about two weeks ago about God getting involved. Uh, we talked about the areas and the arenas of divine action. <clears throat> Excuse me. In other words, how and where does God get involved on the earth? How and where does God get involved in the earth? You know, we pray and God, do this for me, do that for me. And God says, I will help you. If you ask, I will help you. So from both sides, there's this uh, asking and supplying, etc. But so many times, children of God have unanswered prayers. And uh, we saw last week that the Bible says, a hope deferred is not good, but desire fulfilled is like a tree of life. So um, let's go on with this. Uh, then last week, we also uh, talked about the areas where, where God works through the, the mediums that God chose to work through on the earth. And uh, we, we started, we started with Luke 11, where God says, where Jesus said, if a father, if his son asks him this, he will not give him that, etc. I think you know the scripture. And then also um, we talked about the conditions that need to be met before God will get actively involved in our lives and on the earth. And uh, as I said just now, we looked at the mediums uh, that God chose to use to get involved. And the first one was his word. We saw that God sends his word to accomplish his will and to uh, do his, um, uh, he, he, to do what he sends it for. Uh, Isaiah 55 was our passage that we looked at quite thoroughly last week. Uh, God sends his word to do certain things on the earth through his word. He speaks his word. He sends it by speaking it. And that word will not return to him void, but he expects it to be powerful and to do what he sent it for. So the word of God is one of the mediums that God works through. And uh, then we saw that Paul says, or rather, let's let me backtrack a little bit. The second one, the second medium is man or a man. And that's not uh, male, the gender, male, male gender. It's, um, it's a, it can be a man or a woman, but meaning a person, the corporeal principle, whom, who will go for us. That is the principle that God chose. He works through somebody. Uh, and then we got to Paul where uh, Paul says that uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, he says, For we are God's fellow workers or co-laborers, meaning the apostles, the sent ones, the ministers of God. And then he says to the saints, you are God's field, you are God's building. You are God's field and you are God's building. So <laughs> this is how God accomplishes his plans his purposes, his, thought, his thoughts and desires. He sends forth his word to accomplish the task. But the word cannot just hang in thin air and do its job. It's impossible. It now needs human participation. And we said that this is a corporeal principle. So the word can work on two levels in the corporeal principle. Very important. The first level is through the servant of God, Servants of God who are sent to build up the body and to equip the saints. The first level where the word can work in the corporeal principle is through the servants of God who are sent to build up the body and to equip the saints. Ephesians 4, that model. Uh, those are the ones that the word is sent to. And um, then also Paul um, uh, Paul talks a lot about this. The Bible is, is full of this principle. And uh, you can just read Paul's letters to see this. Now, let's just look at this passage again, talking about this corporeal principle. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, he says, In this work, this is the Philip's translation, 
we work with God. Uh, and just saying again, the we refers to the servants of God. In this work, we work with God. Other translations said we are his co-laborers or fellow workers. In this work, we work with God. And that means that you are a field under God's construction or if you like, a house being built to his plan. So you are a field under God's cultivation or if you like, a house being built to his plan. I, like a master builder, Paul says, I, like a master builder, who knows his job, by the grace God has given me, lay the foundation. Someone else builds upon it. I only say this, let the builder be careful how he builds. So Paul says to the saints, he says, in this work, we the sent ones, the laborers, are co-laborers with God, fellow workers. And that means that you are a field under God's cultivation or a house being built to his plan. So we, the workers, are building the house of God. And then he says, I like a wise master builder or a master builder. Other translations use the word wise. Who knows his job by the grace God has given me, laid the foundation and someone else builds upon it, etc., etc. So there's a clear distinction in Paul's mind between the builder's and the stones or the ones who make up the house that needs to be built. There's a distinction between the workers, the builders, and the stones, uh, the ones being built up, the saints, if I can put it that way. And we'll look at the difference shortly. It is grace that God gives to his laborers, his sent ones, his workers. It's grace that God gives to his laborers to build this house and to cultivate this field, which is the other picture used there, which is made up of the saints or the people of God. So grace gives the wisdom to the laborers to cultivate this field or build this house, the saints, the people of God. We said that the word can work on two levels in the corporeal principle. The first level is through the servants of God who are sent to build up the body, build up the body and to equip the saints. The second level, the saints themselves, the saints themselves, they can also adhere to the corporeal principle and provide a body in and through which the word that God has sent can work to accomplish his purposes. So in other words, I can be built up by the fellow workers of God, the co-laborers, the, the, the sent ones. I have to give myself for their labor to be built up. But that work also needs to happen in me, inside of me. <clears throat> and the word is very clear on this. Let's read Philippians 2, verse 12. So then, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed me, and that not only when I was with you, now even more in my absence, Complete the salvation that God has given you. So Paul says to them, complete the salvation that God has given you with, with a proper sense of awe and responsibility. Complete the salvation that God has given you with a proper sense of awe and responsibility. So be responsible to do this. Have respect. Do this correctly with the right attitude. But you have to complete the salvation that God has given you. You have to complete it. Now, how is this done? Verse 13. For it is God who is at work within you. It is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power, the will and the power to achieve his purposes. Look at those last three words. Wonderful. It is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purposes. So Paul says, please finish or complete your salvation. But the working thereof, the working to do this is from God who works inside of you. 
Now, let me put it in, in, in these words. I wrote it in my own words. So God works in us to want to achieve his purposes. God works in us for us to want to achieve his purposes. God works in us to want to achieve his purposes. The desire, putting the desire in us to want to achieve his purposes, to want to finish this thing. God puts that, he works in us, he puts that desire in us. God sends his word for a task. His co-laborers on the earth pick it up and work according to that. They pick that word up that God sends. They work according to that. And now the saints experience the inward working of God to want to cooperate. Isn't God's plan just amazing? And in so doing, they can complete their salvation or bring God's purposes and plans for them to the full and help to complete the building and cultivate the field. If we are the building and we are the field and we are being built up together as, as Paul says in his letters, then we need to cooperate to complete this thing. Now, how does it start? God works in us and uh, to, to want to do this. God works the desire in us, the willingness. And then God sends his word to accomplish this task. This, the the co-laborers of God, co-workers of God, the, the sent ones pick this up. They, they uh, work according to that word. And now the saints have the inward working of God to want to cooperate. If we have the desire to work to this thing, to make this thing happen, we will cooperate and work with them. And in so doing, they can complete, uh, we can complete our salvation and bring God's plans and purposes to fruition to the full and help to complete the building and cultivate the field. So God works through his servants, his sent ones, whom he gives grace to do the work. And God works in us to want to do it and to cooperate. Can you see how human, uh, our God, divine uh, involvement works? Do you see how God gets involved in doing things? You know, if we do not understand it, we will miss so many of our prayers. Being prayed incorrectly, not hitting the target, not being answered. If we don't understand what God's plan is, what his purposes are, then we will keep on bringing our grocery, grocery list and, and, and just, uh, yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself. But that's not, we want to get God involved in this thing. Oh, we want to get this thing going. And, uh, but, but not understanding it, our prayers will be limited to a very, very low level. Uh, so that is how God does this thing. He sends his word for the task. He gives his word. He speaks his word to his, saint, uh, to his uh, um, servants, the sent ones. They pick this up and they start building. And God works in us to do this thing with them and finish it. Cooperate with them and get it done. And so God gets involved. And now you can think again of Isaiah 55. Um, the word that I sent that goes forth from my mouth will not return to me void, but accomplish what I have sent it for. And so God does his work in the earth by the word, using the word as a medium and using man as a medium. His servants as well as the saints. Uh, God gets involved to do his work. <clears throat> that is the way in which God can complete his church or perfect his bride in the earth and have a finished work on the earth. That's the way God can complete his church or perfect his bride in the earth and have a finished work. You see, the work has to be finished. The work has to be finished. And God needs to get involved in doing this. And that is how it's done. It's through the processes of working together or cooperating with God. It's through the processes of working together or cooperating with God. Now look at one 
Thessalonians 2 verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, a splendid verse, where Paul commends the Thessalonians, <clears throat> and he tells them this, and, and I'm actually going now to, how does this word come to us? How does God speak his word and his purposes into the earth? 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, <laughs> just, just ponder on that for a while. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, so you heard us, but what we spoke in that you received God's word. You welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. You received it as the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So how does God work in the earth in this instance? The word spoken and received works effectively in them that believe it that believe the word. Uh, the word works effectively. You know, the, the Bible says God's word is like a hammer that crushes the rock. Uh, it's so powerful. It can work effectively if it is received. Uh, let's look at the <clears throat> Bible in basic English, uh, their rendering of this scripture. And for this cause, we still give praise to God that when the word came to your ears through us, you took it not as the word of man, but as it truly is the word of God, which has living power in you who have faith. I think we should look at that again. For this cause, we still give praise to God that when the word came to your ears through us. So the word of God comes through a man, a person. Corporeal principle, the word of God is spoken by God through people. Through people, through sent ones. Now when that word came to their ears from the servants of God, they did not say, this is the word of a man. This is not God. I want to hear God himself. This, I can't accept this as the word of God. No, no. They accepted it as the word of God. They did not accept it as the word of Paul or the word of Peter or whoever spoke. They said, this is God speaking to us. I hope you can start discerning where a lot of our problems lie in getting our prayers answered and getting God actively involved in the earth. Uh, they didn't receive it as the word of man, but as it truly is the word of God, which has living power in you who have faith. So the word spoken by the sent ones can have living power in those who hear it, if they receive it and they believe it. Those who hear, that's why Jesus talks so much about hearing, the hearer, the parable of the sower. That's what it's all about. The sower sows the seed. He preaches the word. There are people along the wayside hearing the word in different instances and with different um, hearts, different attitudes, and it has different workings in their life. It's what the whole thing is about. So um, receiving the word, receiving the word, if the word spoken by God's sent ones is received, heard and received, it can effectively work if they believe it. The word spoken by the sent, the word of God spoken by the sent ones. So in other words, maybe God wants to do something in your life, which you have been praying for, which you have been believing for. And God says to you, God wants to say to you today, please, now I'll ask you, please, won't you see this? Won't you just look a bit deeper and forget all your problems that you have with men of God who hurt you and did wrong things, etc., etc., etc. God is trying to say to you today, my son, my daughter, your, uh, the provision for what you ask for is locked up in my word. 
but my word I've given to someone to speak to you. If you receive that, if you believe that, it can have living power in you. Living power. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 12, the word of God is active and powerful and alive. So he, he's trying to tell you today the, 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 what you're looking for, I've locked up in a certain way. And if you do not receive that, you will not receive your answer. You are looking for the answer in, on your terms. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been offended. I don't know. But what the Spirit of God is saying to me is this. You are looking for it on your terms. And that is not the way God works. God works by sending His Word and He sends it. He speaks it through His saints, His sent ones. He speaks it through them. And if you receive that and believe it, it can work actively. It can have living power inside of you. And you can have such a wonderful outcome and result in your life by God working in and through you. Please accept this today. That's a, that's a way it comes to us. So the word that comes from God or is sent from God can have living power in you if you believe it. But you have to receive it as the word of God, even if it comes through someone speaking as a co-laborer with God. Very, very, very important. We are so quick to say we want to hear from God, but we do not want to accept the word that comes through a sent one as the same powerful word than the one which comes or is supposed to come directly from God. We're not, we're not willing to put these two on the same level and accept them as the same. In fact, we struggle to see the two on the same level. What is the difference between the word that would come to you straight from God through an angel standing by your bed tonight and the word coming from the sent one who ministers God's truth to you? What's the difference? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So as with grace, I hope you can remember when you spoke about grace. We once again miss what God has for us because we fail to accept the word of the preacher as coming from God. We fail to receive because we fail to accept the word of the preacher as coming from God. If we can only cross this, get over this hurdle, we can have God actively involved in the earth. But now relationships have been messed up in many ways. And we criticize. We've got a, the spirit of criticism all over us. And we that one's that and that one's not good enough. And this preacher did this to me and that one did that. And this one's like this. And all of this hinders God working in the earth. And the ones missing out are us. We are missing out on what God has for us. Next week, I would like to close this a short series and, and, and do my last thoughts about this. But please go and look at this. And if this, if this is a hindrance in your life, please correct it. Please forgive. Uh, please bring healing in your relationships so that God can do uh, so much for you as He planned, so that He can fulfill His purposes in your life. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this time together. And can I ask today that you will work mightily in us as we, as we let people go free, as we uh, heal relationships, as we come back to the pure, pure, pure sense of the word of God, that you will really get involved in power and in majesty in the earth. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate your time. And may you have a wonderful week. God bless.